Hello, and welcome to my legislative report. I'm State Representative Julie Harhart of the 183rd District in Northampton and Lehigh Counties. Child abuse is too common in our society, and we must do everything we can to prevent it. But when an act of abuse has occurred, then we must do everything we can to prosecute the abuser while protecting the child. This is the goal of a child advocacy center. These centers house medical, legal, and law enforcement professionals under one roof, allowing a child to tell details of their abuse one time. All the necessary parties are there to hear the interview instead of conducting separate interviews, which can bring stress and trauma to the young victim. After 10 years of effort, I was pleased that Governor Corbett signed my legislation into law that would provide a source of funding to these vital centers. Having this funding will hopefully lead to a broader network of child advocacy centers across the state. Please take a moment to view highlights of a press conference celebrating the passage of this bill. I am State Representative Julie Harhart, and I want to thank you for joining me this morning to announce some important news. Uh, with me today, we have uh, State Senator Bob Mensch. We have the Lehigh County District Attorney, Jim Martin. We have uh, Drs. Ronald Swifford and, and John Van Brickle um, are here as well. Um, we also having standing with us uh, Tom Muller, who is the Lehigh County, New Lehigh County Executive. And um, we have Pam. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Pam with Children and Youth. And uh, I, I did, did ask uh, Barbara Barker and Barbara Stoffer to step up here as well because um, way back when, um, we all kind of were working together to, to make this happen. So um, I have brought you all together here um, to announce to the Lehigh Valley that after 10 years of hard work and persistence, we finally have a new state law in place to help fund a vital system to help treat abused children and gather information to prosecute their alleged predators. Let's briefly look at how we achieved this. In 1997, after I authored a House concurrent resolution establishing a study on child abuse in Pennsylvania, I became aware of how much better we could be serving those children who have been abused. One conclusion of that study determined that a more comprehensive system where children could get treatment through one location was needed. This was a fairly new concept and one in which I saw merit. After hearing the testimony, after the hearings and testimony, I had the privilege of being taken on a tour of the Lehigh County Children's Advocacy Center, where I had the opportunity to see the great work being done on behalf of the abused children. It also gives me, gave me a chance to see firsthand the results of my earlier study's conclusion. For those of you who may not be aware, Children's Advocacy Centers, known as CACs, are essentially a one-stop treatment program for abused children, which brings together doctors, nurses, prosecutors, social workers, and law enforcement. The multidisciplinary multi approach gives abused children the best chance to recover and also provides the most effective way to gather evidence to bring predators to justice. Children going through a normal system of reporting would be interviewed countless times at different locations and various, by various individuals, some of whom may not be trained in how to interview abused children. This type of experience can be traumatic to the child and can lead to inconsistencies in the facts, which could jeopardize the prosecution. At a CAC, a child has the benefit to being in a comfortable environment with a person trained in how to talk to the child about abuse. Also, by conducting an interview to get all the facts one time, and it's one time, the process can be videotaped and all the other interested parties, police and DA's office can watch. After this, law enforcement can do its job while working in conjunction with doctors and social workers to make sure the child is appropriately treated and all pertinent evidence is gathered. Currently, nearly two dozen uh, CACs are spread across Pennsylvania's 67 counties. Why do we not have more of these centers, you ask? 
because child advocacy centers to date have been operating on a shoestring budget, pieced together through fundraising efforts, donations, and meager federal grants. Today, I can say they will now have a reliable stream of dedicated funding in place that will create a grant program that can help maintain existing centers and establish new ones. Lehigh County is fortunate because it is one of the few counties to have a CAC within its borders. And I am hopeful with this new law, we will be able to open new CACs and make treatment options available to more Pennsylvania children and their families. I am also pleased to announce Representative Ron Marsico, chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, authored legislation that was signed into law the same day as mine was, dedicating approximately $400,000 for a one-time grant to CACs through the disbursement of existing funds from a program that no longer exists. There is no doubt about it. This has been a long journey, but it was well worth every step. I want to thank all the people in the county who has supported my efforts over the years and have remained so patient. We finally did it. So. Okay. And now um, I would like to introduce um, our uh, district attorney, uh, District Attorney Jim Martin. Would you like to please say a few words? Thank you very much, Representative Harhart, and thank you for your tireless efforts in achieving uh, what was just announced. Back in uh, 1999, the Child Protective Services Act mandated that there be a team approach taken in the investigation and prosecution of child abuse cases. In Lehigh County, we took that a step further and went with what we called a co-location model. Uh, it was located at 740 Hamilton Street. It involved uh, a prosecutor, uh, the detectives assigned to the Outtown Police Department Special Victims Unit, a child abuse investigator assigned to my office, the Office of Children and Youth, and together we collaborated and, and made it happen, and it's been a wonderful um, concept to lessen the pain and the anguish that child abuse victims undergo. As Representative Harhart indicated, it's a one-stop shop. We've had an, a forensics examiner. We have uh, the capability of videotaping and audio uh, taping child witnesses, uh, which is very important in developing a case, a sound case, uh, in these types of prosecutions. Present at the creation, uh, Barbara Barker was, was very instrumental in helping us get established, as was Barb Stofa. Uh, Pam Burley from the Office of Children and Youth has uh, always been cooperative. Her caseworkers, or some of them, were located at the CAC. Unfortunately, several years ago, uh, the building went bad and we had to relocate it uh, here to the government center. Uh, however, I, I'm told that the possibility is, is good, that uh, Dr. Swinford and Dr. Van Brakel and the Pool Trust uh, working together may, be, may enable us to, to move it to another location which would be uh, much more suitable in the future. Uh, Dr. Van Brakel was there at the beginning. He was the pediatrics man who uh, helped us and examined the children. Uh, the hospital has been very supportive. Dr. Swinford, I thank you. Uh, Dr. Van Brakel, of course, we thank you. And the County of Lehigh has been very supportive. Uh, so all of us working together have managed to uh, establish a, a, a very worthwhile child advocacy center uh, that can only get better with funding of, of this type. So uh, Representative Harhart, I recall when, when you visited the CAC at 740 Hamilton, and I recall at that point your commitment to attempt to get funding. That's been the only problem with CACs over the years, a lack of funding. Uh, now we have the ability to, to tap into some funding at the state level, uh, which will be part of the, uh, of the budget on a continuing basis. So we're very pleased and grateful for your, for your hard work, and I thank you again. Thank you, Jim. And now, uh, will Dr. Ronald Swiffer please come forth? Where are you? There you are. <laughs> Here I am. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> and thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> it, it was uh, 1985, I think. 
uh, that they first uh, passed legislation in the country uh, to, uh, with this concept. And uh, since then, about 800 uh, centers have been established, and we have a couple of dozen and are optimistic there will be many more uh, in the 67 counties in the Commonwealth. Uh, so we look forward to that. Uh, there's, there are things of which one is proud, and there are things that you know really make a profound difference in people's lives. And this is one of those things uh, with regard to abuse that is so unfortunately prevalent in our news uh, these days that we are very happy to partner and participate in this and are very optimistic that we'll be able to move to our 17th and Chew site in order to house uh, this multidisciplinary team and that's the way it needs to be done. And so uh, it's, it's exceptional that a district attorney uh, has the vision that uh, Mr. Martin has uh, to collaborate in this way and uh, not feel that like they need to control every step of the process, but recognize there are other experts, and the most important of which has been referred to uh, by uh, Julie and Jim, which, which is that forensic interviewer which knows how to professionally uh, get the information that's necessary, share it in a one-stop site so that multiple interviewers are not necessary, as was mentioned, and uh, we are thrilled to be part of this. Uh, the, Child the National Children's Alliance uh, has this brochure, uh, which I encourage you, and th that's the website, nationalchildrensalliance.org, easy enough to remember. And uh, I think uh, you can learn more about uh, CACs uh, from that publication. Uh, I couldn't possibly uh, <coughs> stop my comments without acknowledging Dr. Van Brakel in our network. He has been tireless, professional, and uh, I used to be his direct supervisor as a chief medical officer, and each year whenever we would sit down to talk about his year in review, I would always end by saying, boy, are the children of this region lucky to have someone like you on their side because when people see that he's the fellow that's going to be taking the stand uh, to testify and educate uh, the jury, the judge, those in the courtroom, uh, he's done a masterful and professional job, and I salute him uh, for those efforts. Thank you, John. And with that, with Dr. Van Brickle, please step forward. <coughs> The, uh, among the central themes of Child Advocacy Center are the uh, improved collaboration of the various disciplines, individuals, institutions involved, uh, and improved outcomes uh, of their actions. Uh, Child Advocacy Centers, as Ron mentioned, have been around for almost three decades at this point, and there have been a lot of outcome studies done. Uh, people who uh, uh, achieve certification at a national level from the National Children's Alliance must meet standards that are written which involve all the disciplines involved which Julie mentioned. Um, in that collaboration, uh, I think one thing we have to <clears throat> acknowledge is that that collaboration and community support uh, needs to extend beyond the participants in the Child Advocacy Center. And uh, I think that uh, particularly today we should acknowledge that our uh, elected representatives uh, are a very important critical group to the, uh, to the success of our CAC. And there are a number of actions going through the legislation at this point uh, which are going to greatly improve our response across the state. One of the, uh, one of the things I mentioned this morning is that uh, I, uh, as we acknowledge Julie Harhart's uh, understanding of the issues, the value of CACs, and her persistence uh, over this period of time, one of the benefits is that she and her aides have done a great job in terms of educating many of her colleagues uh, who needed to support this action as we go forward. As Jim Martin mentioned, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the cost of uh, CACs has been prohibitive in Pennsylvania. Um, in that context, I think, uh, to be truthful, most of the outcome studies I've looked has been 
involved in better outcome for children, both in the immediate and in the long term from CACs, which is, to me, the most important aspect of, the, of this approach. Um, but among these studies has been that of cost, and there are a number of studies that demonstrate that the ultimate cost to taxpayers in areas where child advocacy centers are located is less, uh, and it's very well worth the investment. Uh, so with that, thank you. And uh, we're very appreciative of your efforts. Thank you, Doctor. And you know, um, you can't, you know, being a state representative, you, you have to um, go through a process to have a bill uh, signed into law. And um, you have to have both sides. Uh, you have to have the House and you have to have the Senate. And so I have with us today Senator Mensch, who would like to say a few words because it had to go through his committee, and he was very helpful in getting it through the Senate as well. So, Senator Mench, could you please? Okay. <laughs> Julie, congratulations. First Thank you. Uh, it was it was a good day the other day in the in the governor's uh, um, ante room where the bill was signed, and uh, to see all of the advocates uh, that that gathered for that event, uh, it, it demonstrated just how important uh, a bill such as this really is. And Julie's efforts really helped to educate the. Uh, the legislature. It was something that I would say was not on everyone's uh, radar. Um, Dr. Van Brickle has uh, talked about uh, you know how, how difficult it is to educate people and, and get the, the word out. Uh, but the other issue was how do we fund something like this? You know, in a, in a state with the budget challenges uh, such as Pennsylvania, where do we find additional money? So I uh, I had just I was the newly minted chairman of uh, Aging and Youth in the Senate. And I was in Denver for some training, and uh, uh, Representative Harhart called me. And, Bob, please. And we worked together very well when I was in the House for two years. And she said, please, this is a very important bill. And I said, we, we talked for a while, and, and I, I understood the importance of the bill. And I said, Julie, I assure you we will get it through. And uh, it, it took a little bit of education, um, but uh, one of the missing components in, in the child advocacy centers being successful was finding a recurring revenue stream to be able to pay for um, at least the, the, the grants and the seeding of the idea to be a, a, allow counties. Now, Lehigh County, uh, along with several other counties here in the southeast, had different efforts uh, already going into CACs, but what we saw was that additional monies would really help to make them more professional, more credible, uh, begin to deliver the end tool that we really um, envisioned. So what we see now with uh, in, in Representative Harhart's bill is key to this. What we see is a child advocacy center ultimately located throughout our state no more than two hours from any um, uh, person. Uh, we are, that will be up to uh, the department to, to work on that design. But we, we see it beyond just a county establishment. This is going to become much more multi-focused and, and we will have it within two hours of, of any child that is being uh, um, uh, would, would be in need of the service. Uh, in, in closing, I, I just want to say I, I've really enjoyed my time working in the Lehigh Valley. Uh, uh, I've spent a lot of time here in my, throughout my life as a youth and, and, and as a legislator. And the one thing that, that has always impressed me is the community, the sense of community. And when you have an issue like this, it's not just legislators, it's not just the government, but we have the medical community, we have the social community coming together as a community to address an issue. And there's no finger pointing and saying, it's your job, it's your job. Everyone's saying, it is our job. And I, I have a chance to go to uh, Senator Brown and uh, um, uh, Mr. Butts uh, have a, um, a meeting uh, several times a year where we talk about child issues. There, there's such a, a sense of, of community commitment to our children. And what's more precious to us as Americans than our youth? And, and what within that group, who's more needy of help than those that are being abused. So uh, I applaud the entire community. Really want to congratulate uh, Representative uh, Harhart for her efforts, but uh, this community is wonderful. You come together, you, you do what's right, and you, you put the right fixes in place. So you're all to be congratulated. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Um, and one last speaker. Uh,
who we have to thank for allowing us to be here today is the Lehigh County executive, new executive, um, Tom Muller. Would you like to say a few words? And I really do appreciate you opening your doors and having us here today and being able to have this press conference. For Thank this you. Cause, anytime. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You're always welcome for something like this. I just want to commend Julie uh, for having the tenacity to get this something as important as this through our legislature out there and and uh, thank Bob for supporting it on his side. Uh, the only thing I find sad about the day is to hear that there are only 12 or so in the state already. This is something Lehigh County has believed in very strongly for quite some time now, so I am I'm glad to see it uh, expanded, I, uh, or to be expanded. I certainly hope that both Julie and Bob will have the same tenacity in teaching our legislators to move faster on good things in the future. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know this has gone on longer than anybody intended, but the uh, representative Harhart has given me the opportunity to recognize one other person and entity who also should be up here, and that's the Dorothy Ryder Pool Healthcare Trust, represented by Mr. Ed Meehan, who is the executive director. Uh, that trust has been very supportive of the CAC, uh, working in conjunction with the uh, uh, Lehigh Valley Health Network and Dr. Swinford, uh, it established a, a very generous grant uh, honoring Dr. Van Brakel. So, Ed, thank you, and thank you for your help. Okay, I think that concludes. Um, I thank you again. Um, this is great news for the children in our community and our Commonwealth, and who are and many experience uh, who are and may experience abuse um, with the help of this funding they will have a safe place to tell their story and get the help they need it also enables the authorities to build a better case against the accused and I want to especially thank all of you all of you everybody here um, who work with abused children every day um, I know you do the best to heal them You've been watching a press conference announcing a new law that I sponsored to fund child advocacy centers. These centers are an important resource in prosecuting child abusers and making the process of sharing their stories less stressful for the victim. Following the press conference, some of the supporters of these centers share their thoughts on the importance of this new law. Child abuse does not have to ravage a child's life. Children are strong. and with the right approach, uh, a child does not have to develop the normal things that abused children develop. Whenever a, a child abuse report comes in from the hotline in Harrisburg uh, that occurs in Lehigh County, we're responsible to investigate that child abuse uh, allegation to determine whether it's a substantial allegation or it's an unfounded allegation. And we work collectively with the police when there are certain uh, parameters in place related to the abuse, for example sexual abuse or serious physical injury. We work with the police and do the investigation jointly. And that's what the value of the CAC is in that whenever there is a referral that comes in ten years ago we would talk to the child, the police would talk to the child, the district attorney would talk to the child. Now everybody comes together in the same place and has one conversation with the child to determine what happened. There's a forensic interviewer who does the specialty interview of the child and all of those people who need information about what happened to the child observe that interview and uh, it, it's really much better for the child. They don't have to go through the story 40 million times right. uh, in an effort to tell what happened. So it's less traumatic. In these types of cases, there's a great concern that a child's testimony might have been tainted by uh, an inexpert interviewer asking the child questions or putting words into the child's mouth. We're able to avoid that. We're able to prove that we've avoided it because we have the capability of videotaping and audio taping the, the interview process with the forensics examiner. So it's a crucial role enabling the prosecutor to build the most effective case that, that we can build using a child who is oftentimes very vulnerable, oftentimes very young, and it is sometimes a, a true test to be able to have the child explain what occurred. We do medical evaluations. The, the we is that I work with a nurse practitioner uh, who's employed by Lehigh Valley Health Network. And uh, 
We do the hands-on medical evaluations of children when referred by children and youth and or the police department. The, the National Children's Alliance is a group that oversees CACs in the United States, and one of their uh, requirements that they've added uh, since we joined in 2000 is a child advocate position, and that's specifically to follow these children over a period of time. I, I honestly believe that's a higher level of understanding and care because it is so frequent where now the legal system can wind on at a very slow pace. Uh, and then when it's done, it's not done as far as the child and the family is concerned. And so making sure that the appropriate um, support uh, for the family and for the child is there is absolutely critical. The creation of this network will make it possible that within two hours there will be a state-funded CAC and that means the accessibility, its visibility, so that the people in the region know that this exists, uh, will, will make those services more accessible. We might even dream that it might discourage uh, so this sort of activity occurring in the first place with the knowledge that there are people there to protect those children, a place that they can go and know that, that they are safe there and can tell their story and we can remove those people who are doing this sort of abuse. This way of going about it strengthens the case legally because in court when the, the uh, bring the forensic interviewer onto the stand and they say, well, tell me, George, you know, uh, have you done this before? How many times? I've interviewed 376 children. And that's when the defense attorney turns to the accused and says, we're going to plea out. <laughs> because this is a very credible witness. This is a very credible interview. In the past, as a child would tell each one of these people what happened to them, it would get slightly different. And you can see, in, and that was the defense attorney's job, to say, well, this isn't consistent, this isn't holding up, she's four years old, what does she know? But this is the complete opposite. This is a professional interviewer who's been trained to interview abused children. It's a very narrow specialty. And uh, when you sit in court and say, yeah, I've interviewed 376 kids, everybody listens. So it's, it's a benefit I love to look at because it, it's both the uh, emotional, uh, social benefit to the child, not saying, telling the story over and over again, and the, right with it, it strengthens the legal position. And boy, what more can you ask? Julie is my hero because she is stuck with this. 10 years, that is a long time. Most people would say, okay, this isn't gonna fly or this isn't its time, I'm gonna set it aside. I told her today, I said, you know what? They gave that to you and Julie just to get rid of you. That is, and she's like a terrier hanging onto your pants legs. I, I love her for that. People don't wanna talk about it. It's not a popular subject. Yeah. You know, it's not a popular subject. It hurts, um, it's embarrassing. A lot of time, I'd say almost everybody has knows of somebody who's been abused. They just don't want to talk about it. It's it's not you know, and in our society today, we tend to be very superficial about things. So Julie had to really educate people and keep hitting them over the head. Or it's maybe it's just like <laughs> give it to her <laughs> so she stops talking about it. However, I don't care. It if it worked, it worked. So she's a trooper. When I first went to see her, when uh, the, the current, the director at the time, uh, Barb Stoffer and I went to see Julie, I don't know, maybe 12 years ago, uh, you know, she was right on board because she already knew, you know, so she worked like a trooper. That's all the time we have for this month's report. I'm State Representative Julie Harhart. If you have any questions about what you've just seen, or if I can assist you with any government-related matters, please contact me at either my district offices or through my website. The information will appear on the screen in a moment. Thanks for watching, and please join me next time for Legislative Report.